live from the campus of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and the Information Quality Symposium. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Paul Gillen. Welcome back, this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's traveling live streaming video platform. We go around the country, to conferences all over the country, all over the world in fact, and bring you live interviews with the people who are making those conferences work. Thought leaders like uh, Bill Winkler who joins us now, Chief Technology Officer of Global IDs. Uh, Bill's giving a session later today on uh, data quality and customer experience. And um, Bill, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I was interested by that topic, data quality and customer experience. What does data quality have, in customer, uh, have to do with customer experience? Can you make that real for what us? Is, what does it have to do with it? Um, so if you, if you think of what's happening today, that many organizations are trying to reshape their customer experience, or, um, digitizing it, they're moving it to mobile devices. Um, in the past, if you were calling a customer service rep, if there were data quality issues that the service rep was dealing with, they could have buffered that. But now it's front and center in the screen. So as an example, um, if you went to a website and ordered you know, a t-shirt, and what was delivered was something different than what you had, it's indicative of some sort of data quality problem or system problem. And so there's a relationship, we believe, between the customer experience and the defects in the data that are driving those interactions. And you talk about metrics, data quality metrics, and, and really knowing where those where those uh, uh, those misfires are. What kind of metrics are you, are you talking about? So it, it could be a variety of things, but if um, if you use an example from telecom, um, my background, um, service orders drive everything. The customer orders equipment, they order um, network, uh, and uh, small defects in the order, missing pieces of information, wrong addresses, will cause automated processes to fail, which invariably will cause rework. Some of that will result in, in inferior customer experience. So Bill, you know, we talk to most people when they're talking about data, it's either about using data to create new revenue streams or leveraging the data to help save money. Uh, to, to talk to us about how, how Global IDs is helping customers with, you know, kind of either making or saving money, uh, you know, with data. Making or saving money. Um, a, a lot of people have a surprising amount of duplicate data um, that as, and, and they don't actually, a lot of firms don't actually realize the extent to which they have it. So what our firm does is, our software does, is scan. We use automation and that we discover um, what the data means through automation, but also where you have duplication. So we can tell that it's the same content or roughly the same content. Uh, we can also tell you where it originated from. Through profiling, we can say, this data set is, appears to be originating from this system, and then it flows an hour later to here, two hours later here. So there's tremendous amount of money that's tied up in, say, sand storage. So if you can cut your sand storage, you move data to a lower cost, like uh, NFS, as an example, you can reduce savings. We can show you we have dormant databases, so you can retire them, or at least uh, build strategies to, to reduce costs. I've heard it. Uh, heard estimates that in some companies, as much as 85% of corporate data is in Excel spreadsheets and uh, uh, sitting on desktops, uh, not even on a corporate stand. What do you do about that problem? How do you get How do you get data out of the hands of the people who cling to it and into uh, some sort of shared space where it can actually be managed for quality? It's a good question. Um, I think that varies depending on the industry. I think it varies. Um, um, based on what they're doing. We do see a lot of Excel spreadsheets and we can profile those as well. Um, I don't have a good answer for that okay. question. Um, that, um, but you yeah. can profile, I mean, how do you do that? Um, so that, that everything that um, Excel, uh, different forms of docu documents that can be converted into tabular form, uh, we can bring it in and we can make sense of it. So this, if you were extracting data from a relational database into Excel, that, the same data elements are going to flow through. You may have different labels on the columns, but our software doesn't care. It's actually looking at data values, patterns, relationships among different columns to say, this is the same stuff. Um, this, is, this is where this Excel spreadsheet likely came from. Yeah. Bill, 
what about the value of the data itself? Not all data is created equal. How, how do you kind of separate the you know high quality data versus low quality? Help yeah, customers work through that. That's a great that. question. Yeah. So, um, uh, some of it is taking advantage of that duplication. So the most valuable data in our experience is data that is duplicated because that's what people want. And so it's seeing the same stuff over and over again in multiple databases where the software can correlate it and say, ah, this, this must be important. I don't know necessarily what it means, but I see these same patterns over and over again. Um, second part of your question was around quality. So uh, consistency is an issue. So as things get duplicated from place to place, they may, there may be processes to keep it synchronized, but occasionally there'll be operational errors or, or different things that cause things to get out of sync. So we can also measure, knowing where uh, data originated, we can measure uh, how close this replica is to the original one. We can find things that, um, that um, are places where you should invest perhaps some, some money to clean it up. But it's, it's through this domain profiling that we can, we can find from an organization that might have um, 70 million columns of data, it distills down to something that's probably on the order of about 15,000 data elements that are common across those, um, of which maybe 500 are ones that, that would be core to the business. Um, that seems to be pretty common. Wait, is there a technology solution to, to this, this data getting out of hand? I mean, blockchain or something that can, that can, stamp, <laughs> that, that can stamp this as the one true legitimate version of the truth? I wish. <laughs> I don't have an answer to that either. Well then talk <laughs> about um, where your customers are looking for data quality. I mean, I, IBM's uh, C-suite study last year found the customer experience was the number one priority of business executives in not just North America, but, but in Europe and, uh, and elsewhere in the world. Um, where are they spending now on data quality? Where are they investing now in data quality as a driver of better customer experience? Um, so I will tell you that, that what we're proposing is more of an experiment to try to answer those questions. Um, that uh, Thomas Redman has said many times, and he's written a book on it, Data Driven, where he's talked about the, that the same techniques that we use for manufacturing to control quality, uh, Six Sigma control charts, apply to data as well. Um, and so what we're proposing is, is that um, we work with uh, customers that have uh, 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 can identify a customer service problem that that relates to data, um, and use those same techniques to be able to not only demonstrate the cost of the of the, the the errors, but also to be able to once we correct it, demonstrate the savings that you get once you do it. And we think that if we can get a few key projects like that, that that story, that that example, uh, can build on itself. Our customer satisfaction is notoriously difficult to, to measure accurately. And before we, we began recording, we, we were talking briefly about, uh, about the um, net, promoter uh, net promoter score, which is kind of considered kind of gold standard by many people of customer satisfaction. You said that even that score can be manipulated. Um, so you see it when you go into um, you go to your automobile dealership and have your oil changed, and they say, by the way, you know, rate me a nine or a ten. Or, so that's evidence that there's the system is in place. There's evidence that there's an, there's there's uh, emphasis in that company on improving customer service, but it's it's backfiring. Um, the other thing that you see with Net Promoter Score is that it's sort of a lagging indicator that you can't ask people over and over again, how was your experience, how was your experience? So the thought process is that there's some correlation, we believe, between data defects, the data that is feeding your experience, and your experience. If we can measure that, then maybe we have a surrogate measurement that we can use to, to gauge customer um, experience. So, so Bill, your, your company's been here uh, for a couple of years. I know last year we interviewed your CEO uh, you know, here, here on theCUBE. I'm, I'm curious, can you give us kind of, you know, as, as you look from year to year, how are we progressing? You know, are companies getting better at sorting out metadata, you know, and, and managing their data? You know, are we making progress on, on CDO development? You know? uh, um, it, I, there are places that are very encouraging. Um, there are other aspects where it's, uh, it's unclear how systems become simpler. That you would think that systems have gotten as complex as they possibly can, but you merge two companies that have enormously complex systems and you, there's no way to unravel it in, in a reasonable length of time. Yeah, yeah. So if you go out 50 years, how, do you, how, how can you envision the way this gets 
it's, it's unclear to me how it gets sorted out. But, but um, there is a lot of interest in data. Uh, I see a lot of, um, with machine learning, um, emphasis on being able to pull data in to do very innovative things. Um, with that comes privacy concerns. So we see a lot of um, concern around where is my sensitive data stored. Um, so it's, it's a very exciting area, but there's a lot of uh, work left to be done. And uh, you just got to do it. So, uh, Bill Winkler, <laughs> we're out of time. Uh, thank you very much for joining Thanks us here. Thanks for having me. Uh, best of luck with, uh, with your continuing efforts to simplify data, uh, data uh, complexity at your, at your clients' companies. Thank you. This is theCUBE. We will be back shortly with more guests from the MIT Chief Data Officer Information Quality Symposium in Cambridge, Mass.